Brian and Kenzie in the morning and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101 with Father's Day this weekend. A lot of first time fathers. My second Father's Day. And it's Kenzie's Ooh. husband, Roman, first Father's Day with, uh, Marino. with Marino. And then he's got Tristan, too. So many Father's Days. So he's double duty in it now. Well, yeah, now he gets double the presents. Double the presents, double the fun. Amen. But I want you guys to tell a funny story about your dad or a wild story, whatever, some stupid story at 312-591-8300. For example, uh, Maddie checked in. Must have been when her dad was young. Said, my dad once got into a fight with his sister and bet that she wouldn't run him over with a bike. <laughs> of course, she ran his ass over with a bike <laughs> and didn't get in trouble because who would be stupid enough to challenge your sibling like that and lay down in the middle of the street? Oh, man, that's got to hurt so bad. Well, you also made it easy for them. Uh, yeah. Why, why, why would you allow, like, they just should have to hunt you down and run you over. And yeah. I just, you know. She's on her bike and goes like, yeah, I'll yeah. run you over. Amen. He thought, he, she, thought she wouldn't do it and get, she'd get in trouble. Because that's like running over a log, basically. Yeah. It's easy. Speed bump. Speed bump, exactly. But the speed bump is your rib cage. Yeah. yeah. So if anything, it's less harsh than a speed bump. It's easier. <laughs> a little softer. I always had that kid in the neighborhood at a BMX bike, and he says, I can jump you when you'd yeah. lay down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd pull up on it, and sometimes the tire would hit your stomach. You're like, ah! And then, like, <laughs> like he thought he was going to run you completely over. Because um, I've told a lot of stories about my dad on this radio show. There's one I've never told. So I, it's not exactly relating to me, but my brother Steve. Okay. So... We had a two-story house. Very privileged, oh, right? Oh, 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 look at that. Brian Stairs Rockefeller. Of the house. Okay. Well, it's, a, <laughs> it's important to the story to say that. I'm not bragging that we had a two-story house. Well, okay? it just sets up your fiscal situation. We all know where everybody stands now. <laughs> Where's Brian? He's upstairs. From <laughs> 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 his tower. <laughs> I'm saying I had a very privileged childhood because we had stairs. We'll go up the stairs to the right. You'll see Brian. <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, there were four brothers. Six of us shared one bathroom, just to clarify that. Yeah, but did you have your own terrace? I did not have a terrace. <laughs> now, did your butler clean that bathroom? Yes, he did. Just to clarify. Yes, he did. <laughs> so, so my brother Steve uh, and Greg were sleeping in one room. Me and Darren were in another room. It's like four in the morning. And all of a sudden, here is like... It's pounding uh, upstairs. That's why I had to clarify we had two stories. Oh, okay. It was, <laughs> it was upstairs on my window, and we had a roof, and it was, I recognized the man right away. It was one of my brother Steve's wasted drunk friends named Dave. Knocking on the second story window? Yes. How the hell did he get up there? <laughs> don't, oh, don't, know there to, don't know to this day, oh, actually. Oh, wow. Is there a tree outside? He was a very athletic guy, but he also drank like a fish, and I guess apparently he just somehow climbed up our roof to look for my brother Steve. And at the window, he, I was let a guy. What is he, Spider Man? What do you mean? <laughs> I was like 12 years old, so I opened the window and he goes, Where's Steve? And I go, Next window over. <laughs> so he climbed over there to Steve's window, but he actually went too far, two windows over to my dad's window. <laughs> <laughs> I started pounding on the window. I'm sure that went over and great. Listen, my dad had a short fuse. He was not a, not a guy that played ball. But for some reason, this is why it's a funny story to me, because he didn't lose it. My dad simply walked over to Steve's room and tapped him on the shoulder because I could hear it. He goes, hey, your buddy Dave Manziel is at our window. He's asking for you. Come to my window. <laughs> and he walks by and I'm laughing all of a sudden because I hear all this. And my dad says to me, shut up, go to bed. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I, I, even when I was 12, I was just curious. You don't see the humor in this? That this guy climbed on our roof and is knocking on every window asking for Steve? And all he wanted was a ride home because he was wasted at a party how nearby. How did he get to your house? Well, this is, I, we don't know how he got up, but apparently I looked out the window and saw then Steve going to give him a ride home. And he was on our garage. And then Steve went to the car, and this guy, he just walked off our garage 14 feet and hit the ground on his feet and just kept walking. It was like the Matrix. Like Jesus <laughs> needed a ride home. <laughs> I'll never forget my dad gets mad at me for just laughing a little bit. I'm like, that's the story of your life right there. Yeah, shut oh my your God. ass up. <laughs> he goes, shut up, go to bed. I'm like, okay, I'm in bed, I'm laughing. What You're do like, you I was in bed, there's someone knocking on the window. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm like, you don't see the humor in this, uh, Dad? No. <laughs> Not in you. Not from you, Brian. Oh, so that's the story that I've never told on the air and had to add that one in there. That's so. really fun. So can I tell a moment of my dad just having, like, dad brain? Yes. Okay. 
And we want to hear from you guys, too, at 312-591-8300. So, I love my dad. He's a re- He really is one of the, like, a very, very smart person. He can do anything. He can build my house for me if it burned out. He can handle, he installs windows, builds walls, does whatever, right? But, like, you know how men just don't always think everything through when it comes to, like, small details? Sure. So his dream was to get, like, a, he loves cars. He loves to work on cars, all that. My brother became a mechanic because of him. And he just... He always wanted, like, a muscle car that he could, like, put work into. Yeah. So he finally gets a Mustang, and he's working on it. He's doing stuff, and he gets a custom plate for the Mustang, right? And it's ASNF, his license plate. And I go, Dad, what is what is ASNF? Mm. And he goes, it's an acronym. It stands for A Son Never Forgets. A Son Never Forgets. Okay. He goes, so, like, because we're, we're going to work on this Mustang together because my brother became a mechanic, all that. I go... Dad, your license plate says ass sniff. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, ASNF says ass You're driving around with a license plate that says ass sniff. Nobody's going to look at that and go, ah, a son never forgets. <laughs> <laughs> you have a mug with this nice ass Mustang that says ass sniff on it. <laughs> He's an ass sniffer. That's what he is. so mad at me for ruining it. He's like, nobody's going to think it says ass sniff. I go, everyone's what it says. <laughs> he totally thought people would get the plate. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. God. He's an ass man. A Seinfeld episode. In case I want to hear about your dad in a second. We know he likes birds and bears, but uh, Greg's checking in from Libertyville. Yeah, I want to talk to Greg. He's way more interesting than me. Greg, ahoy, what's up, man? Tell us a story about your dad. All right, ahoy. Uh, my dad, back in the 80s, invented kibbles and bits, pepperonis, and sausages. Wait, what? what? He's a genius. Yeah. He was in uh, chemical engineer. He was in pet food science for like 35 years and made cat food first, then moved to Quaker Oats and invented kibbles and bits, pepperonis and sausages. I mean, are you a billionaire? Are you a pepperoni? <laughs> no, he said it was just part of his job. That's just, you know, the nine to five working at Quaker Oats. Damn. Did you guys have two stories growing up? <laughs> <laughs> we did eat... Uh, Dog food. I ate plenty of dog food. Oh, whoa. Whoa. Yeah. It was about the palatability. How did it taste? So they've used your judgment on taste for the dogs? Whoa, you could have got a dog. Yeah. <laughs> we that. had a dog. Yeah. <laughs> we, and I, when my dad was making cat food, the dog ate cat food. And then when we moved to Quaker, the dog started eating dog food. Oh. Oh. This is good for the dog. This is good for the dog. But uh, my, my dad lives in Florida and... Uh, he goes out at night, and he still uses these stories to attract women. Oh. Oh. And he's 88. He's like, want to come back to my place and try some kibbles and bits? <laughs> <laughs> the Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. We have Case's movie review of Mall Rats on the way in relation to Riot Fest and Riot Land being created in uh, Bridgeview. That is based on mall rats. A lot of the stuff in there when we had this debut this week on Wednesday when we talked to Riot Mike. You can see all that information at Q101.com about Riot Fest. Now, uh, we're talking about your dad. Tell some wild stories about your dad. Joe Tech in 630. My dad was so drunk once he tried to take my brother's gerbil on a walk with a chain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love dads. Uh, <laughs> Uh, let's check okay. in. Oh, go ahead, Kenzie. Got okay. one? Marissa from Evanston said, it's funny now, and he's fine, but my dad accidentally got roofied at a music festival in Kentucky during Stevie Nicks. Oh, boy. <laughs> what? I wonder if he thought, like, her voice was off. Like, ah. Psychedelic. Yeah, you know how she sings. All right. Uh, Jennifer, check it in from Orland Park. Jennifer, what's up? Uh, hi. Um, so I have one, like, really great story about my dad. When I was back in the 80s, I... The first time I drove down to Chicago, Illinois, um, so well, Chicago, obviously, um, I was picking up a girlfriend, and we were going to Medusa's, and we stopped at, do you remember, like, Medusa's? Oh, the alley? yes, remember oh, yeah. Medusa's. Yes, <laughs> and so I was 17, first time going down there, and we went into the alley, and there was this hot guy and um, working there, and he had this 18-inch fin, he was super tall, and we were talking with him, he wanted me to pick him up when he got off of work. I had to be home at midnight. He got off at midnight, and um, so I thought, okay, I only live about 20 minutes from here. I'll be a little bit late. That'll be okay. Um, But my friend lived on the south side of Chicago, like Avenue O, Avenue 8, something like that. 
And in the process of dropping her off, we get caught by a million trains. And I don't get home until 1 o'clock in the morning. When I get home, I'm paranoid. I could see my dad pacing back and forth through the kitchen window. And we had like a raised ranch. So we went inside. I told this guy, Brian, to just stay on the landing while I went up to talk to my dad. And he was livid. I was so late. You know what time it is? All this yelling. And I'm like, but dad, I I brought home a friend. And he's like, you brought home a friend? Let me meet your friend. And so Brian comes up. He's so tall and with this 18-inch bed. He's got to, like, duck underneath the uh, the doorway. And my dad is this little guy, and he sees him. This little, my dad's this little Italian guy, and he just yells at him. He's like, what's your name? Brian. Um, Brian. He says, he's like, Brian, nice to meet you. Now get the hell out of here. And I'm like, yeah, but wait. And we lived in Riverdale. Um, and the next train to the city was at 4.55 in the morning. I knew the schedule, like the back of my hand. I'm like, yeah, the train's not until 4.55. You can't make them, like, sit at the train station for the next, like, five hours. And he's like, okay, fine. You know, but you have to stay here in the kitchen. You're not going, and then you get out of here at 4.30 and catch that train. So my dad goes to bed, and I sat up the rest of the night talking to Brian. And then he left, and there was no way I was going to bed because my bedroom was right across from my parents. So I went to sleep in the den, which was right off the kitchen. And in the morning, I started to wake up, and I could hear my dad and my mom talking. And um, so I'm like, oh, God, I was so afraid. And all of a sudden, my door opens a crack, and my dad peeks in. And I pretended like I was sleeping, but, you know, there was no, you know, I, he knew I was awake. He saw my eyes open, and he's like, Jenny, you up? And I was kind of stretched and said, yeah, yeah, I'm, I, what? And he said, we, um, we need to apologize to you. <laughs> and I just sat straight up. I'm like, you need to apologize. Okay, I'm listening. And then in the end, he was furious about what time I got home. But my whole story about being caught by the trains and everything, he, he, he grew up on the south side of Chicago. He knew that there was no way my first time driving to Chicago that I would have known that it would take, well, I'd get caught by all these trains and stuff. And he said I did the responsible thing. I could have stayed out all night and not shown up. And, I, you know, with this scary dude, you know, with the, with the fin and, and, you know, he had leather and all these, you know, studs and everything. He said, but you did the responsible thing. You came home and brought this guy here where you were safe. Well, wow. That's so wild. Also a hell of a story. I'm also worried it was you, Brian, because you loved the alley and you're super tall and your name is Brian. Were you at this woman's house? <laughs> I got to admit. Uh, I, 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 Do you recognize this? I got to admit this was scaring me in the middle of the story. <laughs> It like, was not anyways, me. Anyways, I have a kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can verify it was Happy Father's Day. Not me. Not me. No. Brian and Kenzie. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. The weekend Q101 coming up here in a few seconds. But, uh, well, this week a band reunited that said they would never reunite after they broke up and they performed the last time in 2007. So it's been 17 years since they've been together. And that band was REM got back together as they were inducted into the songwriters hall of fame, different from the rock and roll hall of fame. Which they are already of. They're which, already they, me- which they are already members of. Yeah. That's the last time they got together. I believe was the hall of fame with, oh. with Bill Berry, their original drummer playing drums. They went on a tour in 2008, finished up playing live then last album, 2011, but it's been 15 years plus now since the original four were on stage together. Unbelievable. And uh, there was very funny parts of it because they sit there and, you know, this is a band that, you know, you could almost call them the first modern rock band Uh in the Q101 alternative format world. Uh, I remember, of course, you know, just hearing, you know, the one I loved the first time and it just changed my life in a way. I hate to say that because I don't hate to say it, but it's just in a a weird way of being a rocker kid, a metalhead. And then hearing that song changed my perception of music. Without question. It opened you up to different avenues. It did. And also, you know, that they were like kind of the first college radio band to make it. Mm-hmm. And now, of course, bands get on college radio or whatever, independent radio, and they, they kind of get there. But I remember, you know, that was uh, the college radio vibe that I remember hearing about. Wow, they made it. And there were a lot of bands in that vein, but they made it because yeah. they're songs. I mean, they, they're, to me, they're the greatest American band of all time mm. because they have this crazy career where there are these underground darlings up until the one I love, and then you have this stretch where it's the one I love through the album Monster with Bang and Blame and What's the Frequency, Kenneth and Strange Currencies, which was in The Bear, and it's this it's just man on the moon, drive, losing my religion. There's all these giant hits, and then they have this post-prime that is also, I think, incredibly underrated, and, you know, they've all, they've all remained friends. They retired amicably. It wasn't a nasty breakup, 
but I never thought we would see the four of them on stage again. And uh, the, the video that's on Q101 social media and on our website, it may be really emotional. Yeah, here's the conversation on getting back together and what would, what it would take. That's losing my religion last night. Oh. You Oh, man. Pretty wild. And then here's them talking about breaking up and uh, why they, you know, why they broke up. I think the main reason was that there wasn't anything we could agree on really musically. <laughs> what kind of music, how to record it, are we yeah. going to go on tour? We could barely agree on where to go to dinner. And now we could just <laughs> agree on where to go to dinner. Right. We're sitting at the same table together with yeah. deep admiration and lifelong friendship. Yeah. A lot of people that do this can't. What would it take to get you guys back together one more time? A comet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, at this point, they've done it all. And, like, so many bands are so tempted to come back. I mean, their reunion tour, what would that rate? A billion dollars, possibly, with the way things have gone if they reu did a reunion tour. But they've got a lot of money, and they do other things now, and they're just like, hey, we did it. It's, it's, we're not going to go on and just play the hits again. I, I try to think with them and then with the Smiths, who are my favorite band of all time, neither will reunite. You know, the Smiths all hate each other. R.E.M. all like each other, and they don't want to ruin it. But... If there was, you know, the the one last show, I mean, I would empty my bank account to go see those. I yeah. wouldn't be able to miss it. They could easily do that. Now, listen, who were we talking about the other day? Now I forget. Where we're like, they've, they've actually been saying their name wrong for too long and you can't change it. Do you remember who we were talking about? I know what you're saying. I think Tove Lowe is who we were talking about. No, there was another person. Well, Chad, also Chad, Chad, Chad Kruger from yes, Nickelback. That's who we were talking about. He's, that's how he said it should be said, not Chad Kroger. Mm -hmm. I always had that was a controversial opinion i have always said that about rem that i believe they wanted to be called the rems mm -hmm. i have always said the that rems because they are actually they they got their name literally from the rem cycle like that's what they named themselves after mm -hmm. and that's how you say it and i firmly with all my heart and soul and you can't convince me otherwise believe they wanted to be called the rems and everyone started calling them rem and it just it's too late counterpoint to that maybe it's the rem cycle and we've been saying rem cycle wrong our entire lives we'll call a doctor <laughs> from and 90210 then, yes <laughs> and you get that checked out if we could just set up an interview with michael stipe to ask him that question i just want to know <laughs> <laughs> well listen uh we'll see if we can get there it'd be great Lollapalooza. they're not on this one but it'd be great next year if rem could get back together just one it'd be it'd be really amazing but again I also respect it when you walk away and you've done everything you can do and you're not just doing it for a paycheck. Well, Mike Mills and Peter Buck, who are in the band, they have a band called The Baseball Project where they go around and tour with ex-baseball players who are now musicians. They're coming to Evanston in July, and then Michael Stipe has his own solo project. So they're around, but I don't... I think that little snippet you played of Losing My Religion last night, that's probably the last we'll ever get of R.E.M. as R.E.M. Also, fun fact about Chicago, they were the first act at the Metro. That's right. 40 years ago. They were the first band really? to play the Metro in uh, case that story. Well, yeah, so it was 1982, and Joe Shanahan, who runs the Metro, he had seen them in New York and had made friends with them there, and then he had this space, and... I, I always get confused on whether they played what we now recognize as the Metro or if, if it was that building where the Smart Bar was at the time on the fourth floor, but it was the first show that Joe Shanahan promoted there, and they packed about 500 people in there in 1982, REM. They're a baby band, but they were still so cool and so ahead of their time at the time, and without REM, the Metro is not what it is now. Well, the funny story we're talking about is Joe Shanahan borrowed money. That's right. From family members to get that show to happen. And then, of course, now it's uh, the Metro and everything you've seen at the Metro for 40 years. It started with R.E.M. You know what would be perfect? What's that? Is that they did get back together and then they played the Metro stage at Riot Fest. Can you think of a more, like, like a better place? Nope. To see them. Nope. I can't. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Why don't you start working on that call this weekend? Them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, case? Call, call R.E.M. Kenzie. Listen, you do it. No, Kenzie, you're the producer. Okay. So if you could call them after the show. Great. And let them know what we're talking about today. I'd be more than happy to give Thank Michael you. Stipe a call. Well, let, let's play some R.E.M. And it's the uh, greatest ID. We call these IDs, artist IDs, that uh, Q101 has. Hi, this is Mike Mills of R.E.M. You know, we got our start on college radio and now sell out bastard stations like Q101 are ruining our music. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> Brian and Kenzie in the morning, and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101.